Hello everybody, John Fulford here. Uh, yeah, the background is strange because I'm setting up a video shoot here. So I had to take down the black curtain and there's no posters on the wall. So we're just gonna have to deal with it. This video is about 10 tips for how to nail a music search written by the ever smart Amanda Creek Thomas. I linked to her article in the description below. I'm just giving a summary of it for those of you that are unaware of her website, tadpoleaudio.com. Read these tips, even though I'm giving them to you now, read them, read them, read them, take notes on them. These are all great tips and a couple things that I found out that I wasn't doing that Amanda told me to do through this. So this is, this is awesome, this is awesome. So I'm gonna go through these kind of quickly. Number one, time is of the essence. That means if you get the brief in at 2.03 p.m. and you have music that you know would fit the brief, don't go to Chipotle and then come back and do it. You know, send the music out right away. Sooner's better, even though they say, you know, we need the music by Thursday. I wanna send it as soon as possible. I wanna send it Tuesday or Wednesday. No one ever missed the sync by sending something before the deadline. Two, take note of all keywords, phrases, and references. Okay, one little word, not, could flip your search upside down. We need music not like this, or we need music like this. Hey, I almost lost a theme song because uh, the, the producer of the series sent me some examples that he did not like. So my co-writer and I made a whole bunch of examples that sounded like those examples and uh, I, I could tell we were close to getting the boot until I, you know, we did the opposite, landed the theme song and, and got a good upfront payment and some good royalties. So read every word. Three, do as much ancillary research as you can. Your definition of hip might be totally different than the music supervisor's definition of hip. Look up the show, watch the show, Go on Spotify, look what they used last season, look what they're using this season, get a feel for the show and, and your searches will be a lot better. You might think that you don't have a song to fit the search and then you listen to the Spotify playlist of the show and guess what, you have songs that work perfectly. Cause you know, these words, hip, we need something blue, we need something, you know, indie. Do the research on what the show is already using. That, that, that's a great tip. That's a great tip. I remember I sent something to a friend of mine who's souping the show. She wanted something that sounded hip. I sent something that I thought that was hip and it, it was the opposite of what she wanted. So now I know when this supervisor means hip, it means this. Four, only send the best of the best. Okay, the best of the best. When you send a track out, it has to be so good that they can't not almost use it. I can't, I can't say it's too good so they can't not use it because then we'd all be billionaires, you know, but they have to be like, hey, this track wasn't right for the scene, but oh my God, that track's amazing. Let me put it into this folder of my favorite tracks so they could use it later. You understand what I'm saying? So if you send them a track that's so good and for whatever reason it doesn't land that specific placement, but the track's amazing, it's gonna go in the music supervisor's best of folder and then, and then one day you'll be at Chipotle or something and you'll get a phone call saying, hey, we wanna use your song in this scene, is that okay, here's some money, okay? Your music has to be so good they can't ignore it. Five, explain anything that might not be clear. What this means is if you get a brief and you have some songs that you're not sure if they fit the brief or they almost fit but there's one defining characteristic that does not fit the brief, Explain why you're sending the tracks. Case in point, I got a brief from a music supervisor that needed some music with a specific set of guidelines. I had some music that almost fit, but there was a couple things that were totally opposite of what they wanted. But I really loved the artist, I really loved the songs, and I knew the supervisor would love the songs even though they might not exactly fit. So I used my professional judgment, sent the songs anyway, and said, look, these don't fit all the bullet points, but you should take a listen if you have a chance. These are really great. Now you could, this is like advanced pitching, okay? You can't do this all the time. Maybe once a year I would do it, okay? And you have to really be sure that, that they're gonna get listened to and even if they're not right for the, the scene, that they're gonna be like, oh, th these are really great, you know, thanks for sending. That even goes back to the fourth point 
only send the best of the best. Six, be uber organized. Okay, the one time I sent a track to a music supervisor with no metadata, you know, just I sent it to him over iChat. Hey, check this track out, I think it's really cool. The one time I sent something with no metadata, the supervisor goes, hey man, there's no metadata in here, okay? You need metadata, okay? P stuff doesn't get sent out of my laptop to any type of film or TV or advertising executives with, without there being metadata, okay? My own, all right, Amanda, I'm gonna break off from what you're saying too at my own thing. There's such thing as too much metadata. If the song title is Fulford underscore title, the artist is Fulford underscore artist, the album is Fulford underscore, you don't wanna have too much. You know what I mean? Because that can make the song look like it's a library track. Embedded metadata is fine in source audio or iTunes, comment section, I still put a tag with the title name uh, when I'm sending through box.com or something like that. So if, if the track isn't, doesn't go into the buyer's iTunes or the, or the licensee's iTunes, they can still see it's from Fulford. Seven, aim for as few emails and clicks possible. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you on my YouTube channel, SoundCloud sucks. When you unsubscribe, you give me the thumbs down, it goes back. Few clicks as possible. Amanda says, and I quote, we generally like Box the best because you can easily stream and download tracks. Okay, Box, the interface for what we're doing out here, you know, doing music for, for media, Box is just the all purpose, you need Box, it's, it's the all purpose best. More advanced software is Source Audio and Sync Tank. I have Source Audio myself. Then Amanda says how SoundCloud is a lovely interface but not as user friendly as Box. It's what I've been saying people for six months on here. Okay, it is what it is, all right? I'm sorry that you don't like Box, that you like SoundCloud, but it, it, is, it is what it is. Number eight, know your co-owners, okay? Know your co-owners. With all the music I'm pitching from, from the, that I write, that's, that's a moot point, but the stuff that I pitch on behalf of big bands and DJs and, and acts, I gotta make it a point to know who all the participants are in the song, so when I send it and someone wants to use it, I know exactly who to contact uh, for the other signatures of the other publishers, labels, side artists, you know? And it's very, it, it's very tempting just to send music out willy-nilly, but you always gotta check, see who the co-owners are first. That generally won't matter with indies, like if you're watching this and you're making tracks out of your home studio, it shouldn't matter. It's only for tracks with, you know, a bunch of writers and publishers and labels involved, but it's very, very important. A lot of the major labels and major publishers don't know who the other publishers are on a song, okay? That's your opportunity to land placements at their expense. How can you represent a big famous song and not know who the other publishers are in the song? I will never understand that. Major publishers, they lose so many placements like that. That's why I kind of have a dim view of major publishers. You know, you ask them, hey, uh, you know, I see your writer co-wrote this number one hit. Who's the other publishers on the song? And they don't know. They don't even know. Un unreal, unreal, unreal. Number nine, keep it confidential. Don't take these pictures from these soups and forward them all to your buddies. Say, do you have any songs like this? I copy the relevant, like the creative portion, okay? And then I film my own words. I, you know, if I have to go to a manager, for instance, for tracks, then yeah, I take the brief, I edit it so they won't know who it's from or what it's for, et cetera, et cetera. I leave all the personal information out. Um, you know, that's just, you, you gotta do it. You gotta kinda balance it. You gotta kinda balance it because if I'm hitting up a manager of a bunch of big bands with a brief, they're gonna wanna know the details, but I'm not gonna include like personal email addresses and, and things like that, okay? It's just gonna be just enough info so we could talk about it and get some songs. And I, Definitely wouldn't wouldn't send a brief to anyone who I'm not working with on a daily on like a daily basis. Number ten, don't follow up. You know, I wonder all the briefs that I pitch for, especially when I send the best music I can, which is like always. I always think to myself, what happened to that brief that I just sent six perfect tracks? But you can't. You just gotta sit, play your position, write some more music, pitch some more syncs. And if they want to use one of your tracks or if they're interested in using something, they'll let you know. You know, other than that, we got to keep writing more stuff, you know? So don't follow up. Don't follow up. Be pro. You shouldn't have time to follow up. You should be out hustling, 
doing music in the studio, meeting with co-writers, flying around the world in sessions. You don't have time to worry about the brief that you submitted to three days ago. You need a big quantity of quality music, submit to the brief and keep it moving. So there it was, 10 tips for how to nail a music search by Amanda Creek Thomas. Please go to her website, read the article for yourself. I'll be in the comments below. I'm pretty sure she'll be in the comments below to read your comments and if she has time, respond, all right? If you like what you see here, subscribe to the channel, free content. We ain't charging y'all people $58 a month to, to join the YouTube channel. It's ridiculous. Free, free, free. Here's the info straight from Hollywood, California. I want you to succeed. We want you to succeed. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your week.